covered by Anton von Leeuwenhoek. All right. So now let's discuss a very important topic, and that is what are the follicles present in the ovary, and how are they related to the stages of oogenesis or ovum formation. Now, students, ovum formation starts before birth. That means in the uterine life. When the baby girl is inside her mother's womb, her egg formation starts. Now, what happens? This egg is very, very important, so it is well protected. What happens? Try to understand. Now, um, by eighth week of pregnancy, we are talking about a girl, baby girl, who is still inside mother's uterus. By eight week of pregnancy, her gonad is differentiated whether it is testis or ovary. And if she is a girl, it's going to be ovaries. Now, what happens in their ovary? Try to understand. Suppose this is their ovary, right? The girls, the baby girl's ovary. In the ovary, there are a lot of oogonia. This is all happening before birth in the mother's uterus. There are a lot of oogonia. Now, these oogonia, like spermatogonia, are diploid having 46 chromosomes and they will keep on multiplying and forming more oogonia. So this is the same multiplication phase like lot of spermatogonia forms spermatogonia by mitosis. So lot of oogonia are formed. But what is the difference? Spermatogonia starts forming more spermatogonia after, at puberty and after that throughout life of the male. But in females, maximum oogonia are formed by 22 weeks of pregnancy. Maximum. They are formed. So no more oogonia is formed after this. No more oogonia are added after birth or after puberty. That means a lady is born with a fixed number of oogonia. Now these oogonia will undergo growth phase just as in sperm formation and they form primary oocyte. So naturally this is also diploid just like primary spermatocyte. Now what happens? This is all happening in utero, inside uterus before birth. Now these primary oocytes are surrounded by, suppose this is a primary oocyte, it is surrounded by a layer of flat squamous follicular cells. Such a structure is called primary follicle. So what is primary? Uh, such a structure is called primordial follicle. So primordial follicle is equal to primary oocyte surrounded by a simple squamous follicular cells. When these squamous cells become a little taller, they become cuboidal, then it is called primary follicle. So before birth, there are a lot of primary follicles in the ovary of the baby girl, fetus. So there are a lot of primary follicles, right? Now what happens? This primary oocyte will start meiosis 1, just as primary, secondary, uh, uh, primary spermatocyte starts meiosis 1. It will also start in the uterus only, but this gets arrested at diplotene stage of meiosis 1 it gets arrested. So meiosis 1 is not complete. So secondary sperm uh, oocyte is not formed. It is still the diploid cell. Clear? But meiosis has started before birth and it is arrested here. And now when a baby girl is born, what will she have at birth? She will have all these primary follicles with the primary oocyte arrested in diplotene stage of meiosis 1. This is what she is born with. So, she is born with again primary oocyte arrested in this stage. Now, nothing happens from birth till puberty. In fact, till pu puberty. All these primary follicles which are formed, they, were, they are maximum formed in the uterine life and then they keep on regressing. They are 7 lakhs at 22 weeks. Sorry, 7 million. They are 7 million at 22 weeks and then they keep on regressing. And finally, at birth, they remain about 
uh, uh, you know, um, uh, at, uh, like about two to four lakhs, and then by puberty they remain only sixty to eighty thousand in one ovary. So total you can say one point two lakh to one point six lakhs in one ovary. They remain only these many. Right now what happens? So it is still the primary follicle. Now at puberty as the FSH increases, gonadotropin increases, now this primary follicle will grow. Grow means now it will form secondary follicle. Secondary follicle means it is still the primary oocyte but now it will have lot of layers of multi-layered follicular cells. Multi-layer. Plus a new connective tissue layer theca is formed around. So this is the primary follicle but this is the secondary follicle. Inside them it is still the primary oocyte arrested in diplotein stage of meiosis 1. So all these still have diploid primary oocyte arrested in this stage. Now what happens? Every month because of that increased FSH this will grow further and when this will grow further then what will happen? A cavity will be formed. So this is a cavity forming, this is the oocyte inside and because of this cavity now all these are again the same follicular cells, multiple layers and now this theca layer also differentiates into primary, uh, sorry theca interna and theca externa like this. So theca is formed in secondary follicle but differentiated into interna and externa in tertiary follicle. So this is a tertiary follicle. And in this follicle, this cavity has started to form. It is in this tertiary follicle, please mind, that the primary oocyte will complete its first meiosis. So now this primary oocyte is converted into secondary oocyte. So now what is happening students? Try to understand. After puberty, this primary oocyte will complete its meiosis 1. At the end of meiosis 1, two cells are formed. Here also two cells are formed. But one will get more cytoplasm. That will become secondary oocyte. It will become haploid. Chromosome number is halved. And one will become small, receiving less cytoplasm. This is called the first polar body. It is also haploid. This is called unequal cytokinesis. Whereas in spermatogenesis, both the secondary spermatocytes were of equal size, but here they are unequal. This will degenerate or it will form two more polar bodies by meiosis 2. That is uncertain, that is different in different animals. But this will start second meiosis. So where the secondary oocyte is formed? In the tertiary follicle stage. Alright, it is formed in the tertiary follicle stage. Please mind, very very important. By completion of meiosis 1 in primary oocyte. By unequal cytokinesis. So secondary oocyte plus one polar body is formed. Now, there will be further growth of this tertiary follicle. And it will turn into a mature follicle. Which is called graphian follicle. So now there will be these two theca layers. Interna and externa. Right. And this cavity will grow even more. So this is the entire cavity, antrum. In the center now, this is secondary oocyte. And this secondary oocyte secretes a non-cellular glycoprotein layer called zona pellucida around it. Plus, there are all those follicular cells filling the space. Lot of follicular cells like this. So this is a graphian follicle. Named after the scientist D. Graf. Now, this secondary oocyte has begun its meiosis 2 in the tertiary follicle, but it gets arrested in metaphase 2 of meiosis 2. Again, arrested. And now, this secondary oocyte has secreted this zona pellucida, alright. So, zona pellucida is secreted mainly by the secondary oocyte. It's a glycoprotein layer. It is non-cellular layer. All these are direct questions. 
and these are the follicular cells. Now those little follicular cells which forms layers just around zona pellucida, these are called cumulus euphorus. Whereas all the other cells, these cells, these are called membrana granulosa. So basically whether it is cumulus euphorus, whether it is corona radiata, this is also the corona radiata cells or membranous granulosa cells, they all are basically follicular cells. And these many, this, these many follicular cells which are connecting the secondary oocyte with the wall of the follicle, this is called germinal hill. So basically the corona radiata just around zona pellucida, the cumulus euphorus, the membrana granulosa, the germ hill, all these are follicular cells only according to the location, the different names are given. And now what happens on day 14th of the menstrual cycle, there is a sudden LH increase and this ruptures. And when this ruptures, then what happens? Follicular wall ruptures, then the secondary oocyte, which is arrested in metaphase state, along with zona pellucida, and some follicular cells, that is the corona radiata cells. This will be released into fallopian tube. And the remaining follicle, which is now ruptured follicle, like this, it is the ruptured follicle. This will now be converted into corpus luteum. Clear? So all these are questions, students, that when does secondary oocyte formed inside tertiary follicle? by completion of meiosis 1 and in which stage ovum is released out of ovary secondary oocyte arrested in metaphase 2 stage meiosis 2 stage so students right from here when the primary oocyte starts meiosis 1 from there up till when it will finish meiosis 2 that whole is the multiplication phase uh, the maturation phase so maturation phase is beginning before birth, it is going through birth, through puberty and till meiosis 2 is completed. So this is the longest phase. Even in spermatogenesis, maturation is the longest phase. Although this maturation in female is much much longer than the maturation phase in males. Second important point, it is in this stage where yolk sac is synthesized, yolk is synthesized. So in the oviparous animals like birds, reptiles, which produce, which are oviparous, which lay eggs, there the growth phase is longest. Because when the primary oocyte grows from the oogonia, it accumulates, it forms yolk. So this is the uh, phase where vitellogenesis yolk synthesis happens. So this is longest in case of oviparous animals. But in our case, it is the maturation phase which is the longest. Clear? Now, so these two are deployed whereas secondary oocyte and first polar body is haploid and it is in this stage arrested at metaphase 2 that it is released into fallopian tube. Now if suppose there is no fertilization, no intercourse, no fertilization in the cycle then this secondary oocyte will degenerate and it will be shed off with the menstrual bleeding. But if there is a fertilization, if the sperm comes and enter into it then the entry of sperm will complete the second meiosis in this secondary oocyte and when this second meiosis will be completed again there will be unequal distribution of cytoplasm so now ovum is formed which is also haploid and the second polar body is formed so this question is asked when does ovum form or when does second meiosis completed or when does oogenesis completes only when the sperm enters into the secondary oocyte. Then it is completed and the second polar body and then it is thrown out. This polar body is thrown into the perivitline space. Clear? So sperm formation starts at puberty. Oogenesis starts before birth. Sperm formation can continue throughout life because all through life spermatogonia are getting formed whereas ooge Ovum formation can happen only till menopause because we are born with a fixed number of primary follicles. No more oogonia are added after birth. So once that stock is finished, then there will be no more ovum formation. That is why a male can produce children all through his life, but a female cannot after menopause. 
third important point is that in both this is the multiplication phase this is the growth phase and right after primary oocyte begins meiosis 1 till meiosis 2 is completed it is the maturation phase which is longest next sperm formation starts and completes at one go it's a continuous whereas in oogenesis it is completed only if fertilization occurs otherwise oogenesis does not complete next in sperms formation the sperm the entire the all the three phases are completed in the testes in the seminiferous tubules and sperm is formed but in females it is not the case because all this is taking place in the ovary but this step takes place in the fallopian tube after the release of secondary oocyte into fallopian tube because it is where fertilization happens so it is not completing in ovary only these are very very important differences in sperm formation equal cytokinesis takes place here unequal cytokinesis takes place in sperm from one spermatogonium or from one primary spermatocyte four sperms are produced but here from one primary oocyte only one secondary oocyte is formed not two and from one secondary oocyte only one ovum is formed so from one primary oocyte one ovum is formed whereas in men from one primary oocyte four sperms are formed this is the major difference here also total there are four cells getting formed one two and then this will form these two so this will form these two and this will form two more polar bodies so total four cells are formed as happens in meiosis but out of those these two polar bodies which it will form and this polar body these three are polar bodies so the egg that is formed is one only clear very very important but like men these two structures are diploid here whereas like men secondary oocyte polar body ovum all these are haploid all right so now let's see primordial follicle contains the primary oocyte it is maximum 7 million which are formed by 22 weeks of pregnancy and then at birth it remains about 4 lakhs 2 lakhs per ovary and then during pregnancy it there is more atresia and the follicles remains only 60 to 80000 per ovary or 120000 to 160000 in both the ovaries and now after puberty fsh increases every month and 6 to 10 primary follicles start forming secondary follicles like this right so out of which only one to two secondary follicles will be formed rest will be degenerated and now this secondary follicle out of one or two only one will form tertiary follicle and then the graafian follicle so only one graafian follicle is formed per month whereas six to eight primary follicles start developing but only one forms others degenerate clear so the graafian follicle is formed and in this now it is the secondary oocyte arrested in the metaphase stage which is present now there will be ovulation in the secondary oocyte stage into the fallopian tube now in the fallopian tube if there is no fertilization then it degenerates but if there is fertilization then it completes its second meiosis and there is formation of ovum and of course the second polar body now the ruptured graafian follicle will form corpus luteum and if there is fertilization if there is pregnancy then this corpus luteum is maintained by hcg till 12 weeks and if there is no pregnancy then this corpus luteum degenerates into corpus albicans this corpus luteum produces it is formed and maintained by lh it produces progesterone which is the pregnancy hormone so this is how the whole scheme is all right so don't get confused between follicles and oocytes primary primordial follicle primary follicle and secondary follicle they all contain primary oocyte arrested in diploteen stage of meiosis 1 the tertiary follicle and the graafian follicle contain secondary oocyte arrested in metaphase 2 stage clear so this i have already explained you this is a tertiary follicle and see in this tertiary follicle this secondary oocyte arrested in metaphase stage has formed a glycoprotein zona pellucida follicular cavity has started forming theca interna and theca externa and these are the all the follicular cells around now this is a mature tertiary follicle graafian follicle see this whole is the antrum the cavity 
this is theca interna theca externa and th these follicular cells around are called membrana granulosa they are follicular cells this is secondary oocyte surrounding it a non cellular glycoprotein layer called zona pellucida and around this is cumulus oophorus or corona radiata cells and this portion of follicular cells which connects the secondary oocyte with the wall of the follicle is discussed proligerous or germ hill